Thank you, everyone. I'm really honored to be here. My first time in China. Today, I want to start by talking about a film that I shot in 2009 called Julia X. Just to give you a, a quick idea, Julia X is a film about a young woman who goes on an internet date with a handsome stranger, and、uh, the two of them are having a lovely time until things go a bit south, and、uh, they spend the duration of、uh, the 90-minute film trying to kill each other. <laughs> But、uh, I don't want to go into too many details about the script. I want to talk specifically about the. Camera technology that was utilized. We used a variety of different camera systems on Julia X. The A camera system was, of course, a beam splitter camera, and、uh, we also had a handheld camera system, the 3D VX, which is a、uh, an uncompressed 444 system developed by 21st Century 3D. Any time we had the stranger's point of view in the film, we were utilizing this camera, and the idea was to create、uh, sort of a convention. When the stranger is hunting her, and we see his point of view, that's what we're seeing. This is a better picture of the camera system here. That was retired in 2010. This is an image of the BX2, one of the optical beam splitter rigs that was used on the shoot.、Uh, about a week into the production, the BX3 arrived, and that was used for the duration of the film. Both of these beam splitters were designed to accommodate the Red One camera, and in 2009, this was.、Uh, One of the best camera systems available to us. This was prior to the MX sensor, so this was really the first red camera that was developed. And you can see,、uh, if you haven't seen one of these cameras in the real world, they're quite large and heavy.、Uh, you can see them here, mounted on the BX2, and、uh, it's quite big. And moving it is a concern.、Uh, just for a point of comparison, the then and now thing, we can see in this slide. The red one at the bottom, four kilograms, just over ten pounds,、uh, and the current system that we've been using. We just completed a film called Daydreams of Dubai that utilized carbon fiber red epic dragons, dramatically smaller and lighter. In this picture, we actually have an accessory attached to the dragon that is not necessary. So, in actual size, it's even smaller than what's shown here. For those of you that are not familiar with the concept of a beam splitter, a beam splitter basically allows us to、uh, orient two cameras perpendicular to one another, and manipulate the distance between the two cameras by utilizing a one-way mirror. So one camera looks through the mirror, one camera sees a reflection, and this allows us to very precisely control the 3D effect. And what this slide is showing is、uh, as we increase. The interaxial separation, the distance between the two cameras, that's like a volume knob on your 3D effect. As you increase the interaxial separation, the 3D effect is also increased. So back to Julia X, we have this pretty large camera system. You see the BX3 right there with all the gear all over it, and、uh, of course, moving it around was one of the primary concerns. And again, a dolly is a great tool, and even just getting the camera from one place to the next, or raising it up a little bit, or whatever you might want to do with the camera, the dolly became a, a very, very useful tool, and, and、uh, was utilized throughout the production. Here you can see it. Very high up. We've got the ability to boom up and tilt around, and, and really get the camera into the position that we wanted it.、Uh, we did a lot of work in the swamps of Louisiana, and I have affectionately nicknamed this canoe the Swamp Dolly. We didn't actually do any camera moves with it, but again, positioning the camera was something that we needed to be conscious of throughout the production, and, and this tool was utilized. In that regard, the dolly was not only used as a utility to move the camera from place to place. Of course, we had dynamic camera moves that the dolly was very critical in executing. And I really, really, really like to move the camera in 3D. It is such a huge camera that when I was conceiving of how we would shoot this film, I was very conscious of not wanting the camera to feel static or too big. Moving the camera is critical because it introduces motion parallax, and we've heard many people say 3D can be gimmicky, and things coming at the camera or、uh, being very blatantly 3D can be distracting. Just introducing a small amount of motion gives us an additional depth cue of motion parallax that can really enhance 
the subtlety and uh, the drama of the 3D effect. We see more dolly utilization right here. Uh, and you can get an idea of what the weather conditions were like throughout this production. There was a lot of rain, a lot of mud, but that small amount of motion at the top of the shot really enhances the 3D effect without changing the frame very much. Here's, a, here's another uh, example of how camera motion was used, not so much to change the frame, but to enhance the 3D effect. Now here's the dolly, we're about to see the dolly. The dolly is going to make a little bit of a move to the left, and here's the shot from the film. Julia's leaving the date, and again, we're not really trying to change the frame all that much, but as we give this small little move, the motion parallax between characters and objects in the foreground and objects in the background gives a much more pronounced 3D effect. So there was a lot of camera movement throughout the film. It was a, it was a major concern of mine that I did not want the camera to feel static. And hopefully everyone will have a chance to see the film tomorrow in 3D and you can evaluate these shots in 3D. And aside from the dolly, we had other mechanisms for moving the camera. We utilized a crane uh, and we got uh, some, some really nice motion parallax from the crane. This is a scene where Julia is running from the stranger and just the, the motion across the top of the cotton field it's a, it's a beautiful shot when you see it in 3D. It really works well. The crane was very, very effective on the swamp. We, uh, we had a scene on the swamp, and getting the camera into position was quite a challenge. You can see some of the logistical difficulties we were dealing with just moving through. As soon as you get onto water, everything slows down quite a bit. We didn't have a remote head, unfortunately, so we had to be very careful about how we planned our shots and how we executed our shots. You can see the key grip there, very nervous, getting us into position. One of the original ideas was to put the operator on a little raft and uh, allow him to operate, but that really didn't work out too well. So what we ultimately decided on doing was we set up each shot, and then the motion was introduced by, by booming or panning the crane arm and keeping the camera head still. And this worked really well, because it allowed us to keep that motion parallax going uh, without going to the expense of having a remote head and a more complicated and expensive crane. The other system that we utilized was the Steadicam. And we see Dave Isern, the Steadicam operator here, recharging with some Skittles before he's about to suit up and put on this incredibly huge and heavy Steadicam. Here we see Dave again. It doesn't exactly look enthusiastic to be carrying around this 90-pound 3D Steadicam. Take a, take a close look and, and pay particular attention to how he's walking. Uh, this is not so much operating as it is fighting to prevent the thing from falling on the ground. That would have been a very difficult shot to achieve with a dolly because we didn't, we didn't have the ability to lay track uphill and you would have seen the track. Um, you also saw another example there. Uh, of just a small steady cam move where Julia is coming out of the woods and that little bit of motion really added a lot to the shot. So it was very strenuous on the steady cam operator and after just a few shots it became clear that it wasn't going to be too practical to continue doing very much steady cam with the operator wearing the gear. So we very quickly transitioned to hard mounting the steady cam to the dolly and that worked quite well. That gave us the opportunity to have uh, some camera movement that would have been difficult to achieve on a tripod head, not quite easy to achieve on a traditional steady cam either. And you can see right here how that shot was done. As the dolly moves back, the steady cam operator has the ability to very easily move the camera. Again, keeping the camera moving, so important. Well, during the prep of Daydreams of Dubai, which was completed in May of 2014, and actually throughout the film, we were utilizing a BX5, which is a much newer beam splitter rig from 21st century 3D, dramatically lower weight, half the weight of a BX3. And we had uh, carbon fiber epic dragons. And we can see that Neil Bryant is having no difficulty whatsoever walking around. He's walking forwards. He's walking backwards. Uh, he had a great degree of freedom with the Steadicam. And the Steadicam was used quite extensively on Daydreams of Dubai. Back to Julia X, uh, another camera platform that we utilized was a camera truck. 
Uh, and this wasn't the most sophisticated camera truck. This is not an Edge vehicle or a Russian arm or anything like that. This is just a Silverado with a camera stuck on the back of it. But it really allowed us to uh, create some interesting shots. The st stranger drives Julia out to this spot where he's going to kill her. We didn't want to just plop the camera on the side of the road, although we did do that at some times. We wanted to have the freedom to have moving shots, and, and this was a really easy and, and really good solution for us. Back to Daydreams of Dubai here. This is an example of how motorized camera platforms have advanced in the last five years. Uh, this is a micro hexacopter carrying the carbon fiber epic dragons. And uh, this, is, this is a spectacular shot. This camera platform really allows us to do things that you cannot do with any other type of platform. We start right down here on the water as if we were in a boat just like Julia X. But very quickly and with virtually no effort, we can float right above this boat, up to the tree line, above the tree line. But you start to get an idea of how uh, this cutting edge camera platform can really open up a, an amazing array of, of new types of shots that are impossible. We couldn't have a traditional helicopter flying that close or that low to people and boats and things like that. And of course, Daydreams of Dubai is stereoscopic as well. It's going to be a, a 4D motion simulator ride. So uh, back to Julia X, there's a sequence in which uh, someone falls down the stairs. And um, the director, when we were scouting the location, said to me, okay, Jason, you know, we'll have her fall down the stairs from about here. And um, I wasn't really too satisfied with that. I, I really, when I'm making a 3D movie, I don't want it to just be a 2D movie shot with a 3D camera. I really like to think about every shot and how can we enhance the audience's experience in 3D without being over the top or, or drawing them out of the story. So what we did was uh, I, I went with the key grip over to Home Depot, over to the hardware store, and we got some two-by-fours and some plywood, and we put together a little uh, setup here. You can see the 3D rig down below here behind the wood, and the idea was we put a little uh, Lexan in front of the wood and put the camera behind the Lexan, and then the stunt woman came down the stairs. Much more dramatic, much more 3D. And we had a cut van that's not too exotic, but again, another sort of uh, specialized feature that we had to create some special shots in the film. One of my favorite rigs that we built was this bungee rig. It was so simple, but it allowed us to really change the camera movement at a point in the film where this very dramatic fight was going on. The bungee rig basically was a couple bungee cords attached to that metal piece, and that thing could move back and forth on a speed rail rod and that really allowed the operator to move much more quickly than he could with any other type of uh, camera support system and allowed him to really follow the frantic pace of this fight and create a different feel for this section of the movie. Rather than smooth movements on a dolly or a steady cam, we now had this kind of herky-jerky movement uh, that matched the fight. And then another sort of specialty shot that we had was uh, this shot of uh, the character leaving at the end and she sort of peels out in a Mustang right in front of the camera, and that was kind of a, kind of a fun shot. Also take note, the, the, um, the picture double, the uh, precision driver for Julia, if you look in the window, you can see them switching places right now as the precision driver gets into place. The thing that was great is that the photo double was almost a perfect match. <laughs> so the last thing that I want to talk about that's a really, really significant difference between 2009 and 2014 that's going to have a dramatic impact on the cost of the production of the film is the software that's utilized. In 2009, the Red One created 4K files that were incredibly cumbersome to deal with. They had to be transcoded into different formats in order to be utilized, and now, with the uh, Adobe suite of tools, and various other tools, I'm sure, there is no need to transcode. And uh, this saves a ton of money, not only in terms of the time and computer storage space used to transcode, but it allows you to work on your original files in their original size, and you can do it on a laptop. It's an incredibly flexible and robust system. So now you could be doing all of your stereoscopic adjustments on a desktop tool and you don't have a need to go to a very expensive finishing suite. If you know what you're doing, you can complete a film 
this way quite easily. And it's just amazingly powerful. Uh, that is my presentation. Thank you, everyone, for listening. I, I hope you enjoyed it.